East Hope. His cause for canonization is gaining momentum as officials in the Diocese of Brooklyn try to raise awareness. So who was Father Felix Varela and what makes him stand out? Let's see how the work he did 200 years ago is still relevant today as people around the country celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. Here we have the Pusitio um, that was um, written in order to present to um, the, the Holy Father on the virtues of Felix Varela. Retired was, Auxiliary um, Bishop Octavio Lincoln. Cisneros is the first to admit he didn't know much about Felix Varela as a young man growing up in Cuba. But now he's spearheading Varela's cause for sainthood in the Diocese of Brooklyn. He was a voice that spoke for the church with gentleness, with kindness, but with forcefulness. Varela was a Cuban politician, scientist, musician, journalist, and priest. He represented Cuba in Spanish parliament, but was outspoken on issues like ending slavery and freeing the Spanish colonies. He was eventually sentenced to death and exiled. He left his affluent upbringing and education behind and came to New York City in the 1820s to minister to mostly Irish immigrants who were living in poverty. When he comes to New York, he faces the immigrant population and he becomes the priest, the pastor, the shepherd to help the people of New York at that time. He truly is an example for all of us. Las consecuencias de los sucesos durante el año. Bishop Cisneros and Father Christopher Henyu, the coordinator of the Irish Apostolate in the Diocese of Brooklyn, are raising awareness for Varela's cause for sainthood. He was declared a venerable by Pope Benedict XVI in 2012. This is a great way to kind of raise that awareness. You can't make someone a saint if people aren't praying through his intercession. As New York City accommodates a surge of migrants, Bishop Cisneros and Father Henyu say Felix Varela's legacy is a poignant reminder of what the newly arrived need most. We need someone who will fight for them, someone who will treat them with dignity and respect, advocate for the poor and the needy is a, a great lesson learned. This year marks 200 years since Varela arrived in New York City and the 170th anniversary of his death. A miracle that would confirm Varela's beatification is currently being investigated by the Congregation of Saints. Earlier this year, Bishop Cisneros and Father Henyu hosted a gala in honor of Felix Varela. They raised $80,000. The money will go toward creating promotional material to help continue to raise awareness for his cause for canonization. Father Varela has forever made his mark in the Diocese of Brooklyn. A new center named after the Cuban priest was dedicated on Friday. Padre, hijo, Y Espíritu Santo. Amen. Retired Brooklyn Auxiliary Bishop Octavio Cisneros blessed the food pantry and soup kitchen named after the possible future saint, as well as the workers who will be feeding the poor and the homeless every week at the soup kitchen and every month at the food pantry. The center was part of the feast celebration of the patron of Our Lady of Sorrows Church in Corona, Queens. Ahead of the opening, the parish processed with an image of the Blessed Mother after they celebrated mass, then came back out on the streets for a party. The Bishop of Brooklyn, Robert Brennan, celebrated his patron saint on Sunday. Bishop Brennan led the feast day mass at St. Robert Bellarmine Church in Bayside, Queens. St. Robert Bellarmine was one of the most important figures in the Counter-Reformation, which was the Catholic's response to the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century. Following the mass, Bishop Brennan blessed the Korean and English catechists of the parish in honor of Catechetical Sunday. St. Patrick's Day came early as the Great Irish Fair was held in Park Slope, Brooklyn this Saturday. Irish music and dancing took center stage at Holy Name Parish. The annual fair is run by the Irish Building Society and all of its proceeds go to Catholic schools in Brooklyn and Queens. This year was also about education with two seminars dedicated to Father Felix Varela and the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. During mass at the fair, Bishop Brennan said the event, quote, celebrates the heritage of faith that has been passed on to us. Today marks the beginning of National Migration Week in the United States. During this time, Catholics are being encouraged to reflect on the challenges facing migrants and refugees. National Migration Week comes as the nation continues to grapple with a migration crisis from the hundreds of thousands of migrants who have crossed the border every month since the COVID pandemic to the tens of thousands who are being bussed into and settling in New York City. 
Pope Francis is also addressing the worldwide migration crisis with a call for fraternity. At the end of this weekend's Angelus, the pontiff explained why it's urgent for everyone to come together and help those in need. Eso rappresenta una sfida non facile, come vediamo anche dalle cronache di questi giorni, ma che va affrontata insieme in quanto essenziale per il futuro di tutti, che sarà prospero solo se costruito sulla fraternità, mettendo al primo posto la dignità umana, le persone concrete, soprattutto le più bisognose. Roughly 12,000 refugees arrived in Italy last week, where facilities are lacking the resources to help. To read more of Father Varela and the latest on the National Migration Week, just go to the tablet.org. A Louisiana parish is offering forgiveness to the person who beheaded a beloved statue of Jesus. The statue is around 50 years old and is beyond repair. It happened outside of Holy Savior Parish in Lockport, Louisiana, sometime after 10.30 at night on September 12th. The city's chief of police is asking the public for help since security cameras didn't provide any clues. In the meantime, someone hung up a sign from the gospel, according to Luke, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And finally tonight, New Yorkers came together to remember a fallen member of the NYPD. Known as Detective Jason Tata Rivera Way. People gathered at 204th Street and Sherman Avenue, which was rechristened NYPD Detective Jason Tata Rivera Way. Rivera, along with his partner Wilbert Mora, were killed early last year while answering a 911 call in Harlem. Police Commissioner Eddie Caban, Mayor Eric Adams, Rivera's widow Dominique, and others were there for the occasion. The intersection is where Rivera's father dropped him off for school as a child and where he hung out with his friends. That is this current news update. I'm Jessica East Hope. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.